Kia ora everybody. I'm sitting down with Steve Nikolovsky. I had the pleasure of meeting Steve a year and a half ago. We were both up at the Gold Coast looking into exogenous ketones. Um, I was, I, I don't know what, what journey I was on at the time. I think I was looking for an answer to better energy, better heat clarity and, and maybe recover from some of the head knocks. Steve, you just left a, uh, a, a job and, and we're looking for probably something else as well. Um, but before we get into all that, what have you done this weekend, mate? This weekend? Oh, glad you asked, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> what happened? Yesterday I woke up, I didn't sleep good because uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but it's raining buckets here in Melbourne. Right. So that was actually keeping me up a bit. Um, Saturday I had a barbecue down at Fifth Element Wellness, a um, bit of a members Christmas kind of thing. Um, and then today I woke up, had an ice bath with some people uh, and then basically I just hit the streets and I was uh, introducing myself to strangers just for, cause you know, that's what you do. <laughs> no, go and, on. Um, what, what, what was, what was behind that, mate? I've, I've, uh, so. <laughs> I've heard Tim, Tim Ferriss talk about doing things that put you outside of your comfort zone to prove to yourself that anything's possible. But where did that come from for you? Well, that's basically, you know, what it do. Like it's just about, um, coming and getting out of your comfort zone um i've been i'm sure a lot of people have heard of him but i've been re listening to an audio book by david goggins um yes. he's a he's a navy seal he's a bit of a absolute weapon of a human being um and i guess he's just he's all about overcoming yourself overcoming your mind and doing these things that are, that are seemingly pretty hard so uh i mean i've been doing i've been uh doing a lot of stuff myself physically like uh, in the last couple of years so I'm pretty disciplined in terms of like looking after myself meditating cold therapy all that kind of stuff uh, for me the discomfort really came more on the emotional side and in particular I've been working on my confidence to just try and be able to talk to strangers meet meet women better things like that stuff that I could do pretty good when I was drinking lots of booze but these days uh, <laughs> not as easy when you're not in the clubs Nice. So, what was the response like, man? Ah, uh, today. Yeah. Um. Well, look, the first like hour and a half, I actually just couldn't. I was just walking around, building up the balls to actually say something. I'd approach it and stuff, and it was really tough. Like, yeah. um, um, but approach. Ultimately, I think what I learned today is that um, people like people. I think there's so much crap in the just we see so we're exposed to so much junk and crap and uh we forget that no human beings are social creatures we actually want to meet each other and help each other so ultimately look no no dates no numbers or anything today um, <laughs> but i but I, I mean yeah i had some good conversations and it was good i just met some cool people everyone was happy nice uh, i've got a um icebreaker uh, and it's that's a little baby who's obsessed with dogs and i think for people with dogs, that's their icebreaker. But it's, um, I don't know what I was listening to the other day or something. I think it was a Pete Evans podcast or something. And they're talking about like kids and things that how when two kids see each other, they're just like, right, sweet, you're cool, let's play. And like, whereas when we're adults and social construct comes in, it's like you, you barely even can crack a smile at each other. But like you say, humans are humans and we're, we're we're along the same wavelengths and we want to help each other. We want to hear each other's stories. Um, but we've built this social construct that as a child, it's just not there. So like I said, Billy's obsessed with dogs and, you know, you can kind of be from afar and, and go, oh, there's a dog. We can go up to the person and Billy gets to interact with a dog. And meanwhile, you get to interact with a, with a human. And mm -hmm. it, it, it's, it's quite a bizarre thing to break down that actually then you just have this random conversation with a random person and it's, Good day, have a you know, see you later, have a good day, and everyone leaves smiling. It's quite quite bizarre. So it's weird, really, isn't it? Get, yeah. You go on. <laughs> um, well, what was I gonna say? No, look, you're absolutely right. It's weird. It's um and I mean going back to what you were just saying about children like not being an issue, it's like for kids, it's like you go up and someone you say something or like, Oh, can I try this? Can I do this? And then it's like, well, no, it's like, oh big deal, move on. But yeah. we take things so personally now, we build things so up, up so much rather, and um even simple things like just playing. I mean, when did we forget how to just play? Kids love playing. Yeah. I've started playing a lot more these days. I'm 28 years old now and I'm having a blast. Like, just just everything. I go swing on swings when I see them, you know what I mean? It's awesome. But 
You don't see adults doing that. Except ones with uh, nine-month-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> Well, exactly no month, right. nine month olds, not not month, nine month year olds. You know, it's um, a little bit closer to that child equation, I guess. They get yeah. jealous. It's a, uh, it's yeah, it's it's good, it's good permission to to unleash and like, um, in the evenings we roll around on the ground and you know you make stupid noises. It's it's quite a cool place to be. Um, yeah, speaking, of, speaking of places to be, uh, this is probably a, a deep question for you. That's something you're contemplating big time at the moment. Who is Stephen Nikolovsky at the moment. Who is Stephen Nikolovsky? Hi guys, I'm Steve. Um, <laughs> I'm, um, who is he? Um, uh, he's, just, he's just a dude, I guess. I'm a bit of a chiller. Um, I like to call people dude. Um, I just, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, like, I, I, I always obviously ask myself that stuff. I'm always trying to figure out who I am, what it is I'm trying to do. I think that's just something that's been driving me for a very long time because I constantly come to an answer and then change my mind <laughs> or think of something bigger or change it. So um, I guess Stephen Mikulovsky is someone who is always looking for himself, but I'm a little bit done with the looking these days and I'm a bit more into the action. Um, I'm just out trying things, just figuring it out and, and just trying to see what comes as a result of that and what we're left with. And that's um yeah, so so far, so far it's going pretty good. That's awesome, mate. Now you you mentioned David Goggins already. Uh, who are the sort of people out there are, are driving your inspiration? You did a series the other day of of people that are I don't know motivating or inspiring you. You know who else is on your list of people that give you a bit of a boost? Yeah, man. Um, I love this question because I guess <laughs> I get so excited by these people, but um. I guess the the first person who really kick started, I guess, just my uh, my, my my mission in life really is uh, Joe Rogan. I'm sure, a lot of people are similar. I guess I started listening to Joe um, early twenties. Um, it was just a lot of stuff he was saying just really caught my attention. He seemed to say things in a way that I really vibe with. Um, so Joe was like the catalyst. He essentially what I learned from Joe Rogan was that it's fine to do life how you see fit you don't have to fit any into any type of constructs or do what other people expect of you or do just what even makes sense even if it makes sense doesn't make sense to you like there is a way to go out and do that and and i mean he does so many different things as well he's ufc he's into hunting he's like just he's a he's a comedian it was it just broke the limitations for me i'm like i literally can just do what i want to do whatever i reckon's cool and why can't i make that part of my life and that, that kick-started my mission. So Joe Rogan's always someone that uh, I come back to for that. Um, I guess in terms of health and life and everything, um, I guess Paul Check's somebody I've really been looking into more so, more so lately since, um, since joining Fifth Element Wellness. Um, he just uh, seems to really blend health, spirituality, masculinity, nature, all of it, all of it just makes sense. So if I, whenever I want to get really deep, and also be able to simplify things in terms of health and everything. Paul checks someone I go to. Aubrey Marcus, he's my 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 spirit animal. Um, <laughs> CEO, <laughs> um, CEO of On It. Um, he's got a podcast, and he's just he's someone who's good balance to me. Like he's a he's a pretty ripped dude. He's very healthy. Looks jacked. Um, has is in open relationships. Has a beautiful fiance. He's always partying and stuff. So he he enjoys life but he's also very grounded and very down to earth and works hard and, and, and has a mission and goes for it. So yeah, Aubrey's pretty big, big for me too. Um, yeah, some big names. Elon Musk I enjoy just because I think he's an absolute crazy human being. Who's just like, I, right, there's some, there's some big things that we need to do. Let's not complain about how big they are. Let's just go do them. I think that's really cool. Um, then yeah, David Goggins, Jocko Willink, um, these guys just all come down and they teach me about discipline, really. Like, um, yeah, just sometimes, sometimes the best form of self love isn't to just sit down and say you're perfect, even if that's perfectly true. Sometimes you've got to do what you don't necessarily think you want to do in the short term so that you can become who you are capable of being in the long term. And I think that's pretty important. Nice. I'm reading, or well, almost finished reading. Amadeus, and that's one of the things that um, Yuva Harari, Noah Harari, speaks about is that our brains are 
sort of split into two and we're very good at um you know coming up with good plans and, and new year's resolutions are a case of that in that we go right i'm going to do this for this year and that's going to mean that i end up doing that but when it comes to the day-to-day -day, we've got a different part of our brain that says now i'm sore now i'm tired now i want to do this instead and you, you go along with that and so the point that he's coming from is that if we're going to be controlled by artificial intelligence or by a um, artificial personal assistant, is that going to look into how we feel right now or is it going to look into what we want? And so mm -hmm. is that where you're sort of trying to find the balance of what do I want to do right now and what do I really want in terms of the life of Stephen? Sort of, I guess for me, it's just, um, I mean, most of my life I, I, I grew up pretty comfortable. Like I'm not, I didn't, I, I wasn't someone who really faced too much adversity in the sense like I grew up in ghettos or anything. And um, so that didn't really, like, I, I guess that allowed me to basically do what I want in the moment for a very, very long time and ultimately not really get anywhere significant because of it. Like I had a good time. I, I did a lot of good things, but um, I think I'm just, uh, the the more I, actually try things and get out there the more i'm learning that patience is pretty important like it's worth playing the long game because the things that, that it might not be the same for everyone i think everybody's got a different um different threshold a different level of the spectrum they require but for me the things i want to achieve and the type of person i want to be i i need to sit down and actually plan these things out and play the long game a little bit more that's how it seems to me so I wanted, I grew up pretty fat most of my life and I wanted to be uh, not fat. I wanted to be pretty fit. I want to, I want to be able to run through the, through the rainforests and barefooted and jump around on trees and, and be able to have the energy for it. Uh, I couldn't do that by eating chocolate mm -hmm. every day just because I, because at the end of the night I felt like a Snickers bar, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, and so that, that meant like, all right, well, yes i love myself and i feel like a snickers and oh my gosh that'll be so nice and how we're all gonna die one day like who really knows what's right and what's wrong like we should we should treat ourselves yes i agree but not if you want to be a savage running around in the forest with a six pack that's not that's not gonna work yeah mate so, and, yeah. yeah um and we talked to one of your mates on the last podcast on it two podcasts ago um Mr. Mark Kluwer, and he was big on. Oh, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's a legend. He's big on the on the Wim Hof. Um, is there an element of that to the Wim Hof that hey, I know what I get out of this is absolutely incredible, but right now I don't want to plunge in that in that freezing cold pool. <laughs> oh, dude, every single time. <laughs> um, I mean, cold's cold. It's not. It's not a pleasant thing. It's not about pretending that it's a pleasant thing. I mean, I've been doing. I think I started having cold showers daily about maybe two and a half, close to three years ago now. And I can count on one hand the amount of times I've actually missed a cold bath. Mm -hmm. And those weren't days where I just, I just had a hot bath. Those are days I just didn't shower at all. Um, so I, like that's something I've done pretty consistently for a while. Yet every single morning, I have to fight with myself about not wanting to go in. Like I, to this day, I've been through that discomfort and all, but I'm still like, oh shit, maybe I'll just start with the hot water and see how we go. It's like, no, just just walk in, face the cold and do it. And so I, I definitely don't want to do it, but every single time I just walk into that water and face it, I feel a lot better for it. And it, well, I mean, that's a good example because the cold just, I think, changes your brain ridiculously fast, changes your physiology nice and quick. So you... You do start thinking the thoughts you have before you go in are one thing and then you step in and then you come out and your thoughts are very different um going in my thoughts are like mm, nah done this enough don't really need it what's the worst that can happen if i don't do it and then once i do step in and come out i'm like all right i'm pretty glad i did that i feel much better now so yeah to answer your question yes i forgot what your question was exactly but yeah <laughs> no that was, that was basically it how's how's it how does yeah, it correlate to doing what you want to do and getting out what you want to get out of it too, in terms of how I feel right now. It's not never, you're right. It's, it's never like I want to do this right now. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. And I mean, I don't, I, I think I've been, I mean, lately, especially cause I'm, I've, I've been doing a lot of hard, um, 
I've been doing my protocol, which we'll talk about at some stage. I've been doing a lot of things on myself that do require a lot of discipline and pushing and a lot of, I guess, masculine energy, you can call it a lot of doing. Um, I'm noticing now I'm starting to get a lot of pushback from people who do um, prefer to have a more feminine approach to life or a bit more, um, bit more Taoism, a bit more ebbs and flows and let it happen. And I just, I guess I just want to be clear and like, I don't, that's important like I, that is a massive part of my life just letting it flow and letting things happen and just simply being being perfect in your imperfection like it's important but i think time and place is something that's important as well um there's a time to let it flow and there's a time to go and i think in general as humans again we're going to take the path of least resistance in general we have to assume that more often than not we're going to just go we're going to want things that probably aren't that good for us but feel good in the short term and so that's the mindset i go in with these days i assume that i'm going to want to take the easy road and so i'll i i I think that pushes me to take the harder road a little bit more and i still find that i have time for that softening like a lot of meditation a lot of i spend a lot of time out in the out in the woods out in nature just writing poetry dancing all that kind of stuff's part of it so yeah, they're, they're, they're both important is what I'm trying to say. No, absolutely. And in, in my job, um, and also being being a dad of a little girl, I'm definitely appreciative of the times when I'm a bit, uh, I don't know, I guess you call it, try going to the psycho zone or, or jump in the cold or, you know, <laughs> just drive myself to go for a swim when, hey, you know, it's easier to go inside and jump, having a quick shower and put the coffee on and, Eat your breakfast. <laughs> no, yeah. That's good. Mate, how did you get introduced to Fifth Element Wellness? So, um, I guess it was it was a series of events, really. I mean, I guess um, where does it start? At first, I was I was um, working with a chain of restaurants who basically it was an awesome job. I was running a restaurant at a time, some hustling bustling ones um, down here in Melbourne, and I got in at a pretty early time, so they uh they were going through a lot of expansion which meant i got uh i got the opportunity to work with some really really smart people and get me a part of that expansion and learn a lot of leadership and business skills that um i never thought i'd learn working hospitality which was awesome but it also really really fried me out um like there were weeks where i was working 100 hours plus i was drinking and partying every night plus i was just yeah, I was, everything. I was burning the candle at both ends, basically. I wasn't working out. I wasn't looking after myself. I wasn't eating good. So essentially, I just came to a point where right, I'm done with that. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do. I was very into Joe Rogan and Aubrey Marcus and these guys. And I, uh, I liked what they were doing and the way they were living their lives. And I was just like, all right, there has to be a way to do that, to, to actually live life on my own terms a little bit. Um, I'd done university. I actually studied accounting and finance in university. And I, yeah, that, that wasn't the best thing for someone like me. Um, I don't, didn't exactly love that. Um, so I guess I just, I threw myself out of that job and I had to find, I had to find a way to just figure out what my interests were. Um, I'd been doing a lot of flotation therapy at that time as well, pretty consistently. Mm. And, um, and so basically I ended up uh, getting a job with, uh, with a flotation tank company in Melbourne here. Um, and that lasted for a couple of months. I, um, it ultimately, I think it just wasn't, wasn't the right fit. I think, um, I'm a very loud, obnoxious person and that's not good when you try to be in, uh, in, in quiet, relaxing environments. So, <laughs> um, so finished up with that one and then basically, um, I was, that's, well, that's just before I met, uh, met Stag here. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was pretty big. I'd, I'd been eating, um, uh, I'd been trying to eat a keto diet for a little bit, listening to Joe Rogan, Tim Ferriss, Aubrey, all these people talking about how good keto is. Well, me and my best friend had for a while been contemplating network marketing and like, is this a pyramid scheme? Is it not? Da, da, da. And then um, pretty much as soon as I was finishing that, uh, a dude I knew showed me the exogenous ketones and I was like, I got nothing to lose. Let's give this a crack and, and answer all these questions, see what it's all about. So yeah. that ended up playing playing in the ketone game for for a cup for a little bit as well. Came up the Gold Coast, checked it all out. Um and ultimately as well, I think that was just for me, it was an experience and it was just um it just ultimately wasn't really what I was looking for. I was just I was looking for I didn't know what I was looking for. 
um, what I needed was rest. I didn't give myself any rest in between all the stress of uh, the restaurants and, and just jumping into a new life. So I went back um, uh, to Geelong, which is where my family's from, which is where I'm from. It took about three months off and um, I wasn't doing much. I was in a pretty, I was in a pretty dark space, to be honest. I, I wasn't really associating with many people. I just couldn't figure anything out. And I was cortisol through the roof. I was fried. I was, I guess, borderline adrenal fatigue, you'd probably say. Um, and so and, and when, you say, had, when you say yeah. borderline adrenal fatigue, do you mean like clinically adrenal fatigue or adrenal fatigue in terms of your pituitary adrenals quarters uh, thyroid. Well, hba axis i'm yeah. saying I, I i was just under a, i was just under a lot of stress and looking back now I, that's not what i never got diagnosed for it but that's just what i'd say i'd say i was i i just had a lot of stress through lifestyle through through eating habits through all all these things that cause big stress in your life i had them mm. um and i definitely felt the implications from it as well on a lot of physical levels and mental levels uh, i was mm. i wasn't doing great um but anyway, it was good because I did have like I had a few months to just really chill out and not worry about things too much. I spent a lot of time out in nature, just writing, just trying to figure it all out. Um, came to a point where I got bored. Yeah. <laughs> I get bored pretty easy. Um, and I just thought, all right, I, I got to start doing something now. But what, how are you going to do it? Like, how are you going to, how are you going to craft the ideal life of you, of your dreams where, you don't know what it is you're really into or what you like or, or who you are. Um, like I never grew up actually wanting to be anything. If you asked me what I want to be when I was a kid, I couldn't really give you the answer. I don't think I really cared that much. Um, so how do you, how do you craft your life if that's where you're at? Uh, and I thought, all right, what do I enjoy doing? What do I want to do? I like breathing. I like meditating. I like doing yoga. I like writing. I like getting out into nature. So but I guess my, my um, checklist for that week became, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm putting at the forefront of my life. Everything else comes outside of that. Mm. And so I did that for about a week. Um, and throughout that week, I didn't, I, at the end of the week, I guess I went back on some of the notes I'd written and everything. And I essentially extracted a checklist out of it, um, just of a bunch of tasks to do. And I'm like, cool, all right, we're learning. Um, and through that checklist, I ended up applying for some certain jobs. Um, I ended up just doing a whole bunch of random stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with anything now. Um, but essentially, one of my friends um, sent me the link to Fifth Element Wellness. Uh, they were looking for, uh, at the time, we are calling it assistant manager um, for the venue. And I thought, I, I'd sort of, they were on my radar. I'd heard about them. And I looked into them a little bit more. Um, and I thought, I, had, I did not expect to get the job whatsoever. Um, cause I was like, I don't have any experience in this industry or anything, but I figured I do have a lot of, um, leadership and management skills. Um, this, say, this is a job that really seems to be fitting my skill set. Plus what they're actually doing there is everything that I've decided is, uh, what I'm building my life around. So, um, ended up applying a couple of weeks later, got a call back. Um, I've now, I now found out that, um, the boss actually wasn't. Uh, even planning to call me just like I was planning to not apply but we both ended up doing it and um, <laughs> a few weeks later oh there I am That's so awesome. I guess ultimately it's a, it was a, it was one ultimate surrender experiment more than anything well kid come, coming back around a little bit we'll, we'll backtrack slightly yeah. you said that um, if someone had asked you growing up what you wanted to do what you're passionate about you wouldn't have had an answer and then you said you went to uni and did um, accounting and finance. How did that yeah. all fall into place? <laughs> well, that's what you do, isn't it? You, um, you go to school, you go to uni, <laughs> you get a job, you get married. Um, I should have been married three years ago, just FYI. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, no, nah, that's all it was. I just, I guess I went through the motions. Like at, um, in primary school, I was pretty smart. I was top of the class. Like I was very just, I was, I was really into it. Um, I don't know why, I guess it was just a matter of this is just what you do. So I was really good at doing it. Um, and then high school came around and I lost interest a little bit. I was hanging around with a fair bit of hoodlums. Um, but I was still, I still got enough to get pretty decent marks and get by and everything. Um, and then in time, year 12 happened, graduated. And it's like, all right, what do you do next? Um, uh, there's a school in, Ge uh, there's a university rather in Geelong that a lot of people just go to called Deakin. And I was like, all right, what am I going to do? Commerce degrees seem like the way to go for people who 
don't really know what they want to do. So I went there and um, yeah, I, I, that's just, I was just living off momentum. I think I was just, I was just living the life of what's expected because I'd never really been put in a situation where I felt like I had to go out and explore who I am. I just did what you needed to do. Um, and it, it wasn't until a few events in life started happening that started getting me thinking, all right, I, I'm going to take this into my own hands now because I don't, the people who tell me that you should go to school and go to uni and work in an office, a lot of them, from my experience, didn't seem overly happy. They didn't seem overly healthy. Like they didn't, they didn't seem like the type of people I wanted to be. And so deep down, I just didn't buy it. Same as the teachers in school, I think. Like I just didn't, they didn't really seem interested or believe what they were saying deep down. And so neither was I. I just thought, yeah, no, this isn't right. Mm. Um, yeah. And was there any sort of like uh, you did a amplitude test or a, or a careers test and someone said, hey, maybe you should, you're good at some things that maybe you should be an accountant? Was there any of that or just? I remember trying once at school to talk to a career advisor, but I, I don't remember where it got to, but I just, I, I think that says, that says it all. Like I, it didn't grab my interest. It didn't really try and figure out who I am as a person and what my gifts are and how I can contribute to the world. It was just a matter of you get a job so you can get money. Yeah. That's the, that's the machine. So you, so you said a little bit about journaling and writing things down. And um, that's what I talked about at the end with Greg Johnston in the last episode is something that I've started picking up is journaling and writing things down and visualizing. Um, what's your sort of uh, way of going about it and how much do you do? Mm. Uh, it's journaling is probably one thing that I have horrible structure in. It's just sometimes I'll journal for days. Sometimes I won't touch it for a month. Um, I've got about 50 different notebooks that are half filled. <laughs> um, I've got my, all my notes on my phone. I've got different lists, Google drive. Like I just, um, I guess my, I guess I just, when I'm, when, when things aren't going right in my head and I've done everything I need to do in terms of like physically I've, I've done, I'm, I'm at a good place physiologically um, and I still can't figure out, I get, I get the pad out and I just start writing. I'll, usually I'll just start just free flowing, just putting my hand down to the paper and writing whatever comes out. Um, and then pretty quickly, I think I'll, I'll, I'll get what I need to get out of it. I might write lists. I might do a bit of gratitude. I might, write some plans. I do, I write some poetry sometimes. Like I just, whatever, man, just get it out. It, it's something's in there. It doesn't belong inside of you. So I get it out. That's the method I use journaling. Sometimes if I'm out hiking, um, the same, it's the same process. I'll whatever's on the, if there's something on the inside and I can't exactly figure out what it is. So I'll just scream out at the, at the trees, blah, 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 gibberish, whatever it is. Um, and it seems to do the same trick. I'll turn the lights off and I'll dance. <laughs> I think it's just about expression, just some form of boundless expression, and that's um, yeah, that's that's journaling is great for that. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody, not even myself. Wicked. And you mentioned turning the lights off and dancing there. Um, one of your mentors, Aubrey Marcus, is talks about ecstatic dancing, and he's got, oh, yeah. he's got some good tunes on, on Spotify as well for for that sort of thing. And I think another um. Elliot Hulse, he's a big one for um, he. Mm. That was that was what sort of started my journey. Was Elliot Hulse? Um, he used to get this stool that he had strapped a broomstick and a foam roller to the top of, and then he also had like just a normal massage bed that he'd just lie on, and yeah, he'd just do that. He'd just turn the lights off and scream and have a tantrum basically, and then yeah. just, just feel really good. And I remember watching that thinking, man, he's got a point there, like. When you like just really let out your energy, you feel so amazing. This is this was let my, it out, mate. This was in my <laughs> la last year of uni when how I was I was in a real identity crisis in my last year of uni. I didn't. It was it was the end of the road, and I was about to start what it was that I'd been living for since I was twelve, and I don't know who the hell I was and how how it was going to go. But yeah, he came along at a good time, I think, and, and as well as Keegan Smith. That's when I first came across Keegan as well and I think those two people helped sort of put me on the right track and get me started of looking internally and it might have just been that I'd turned 25 and this uh, thing at the front of my head the prefrontal cortex started to click in and and um, <laughs> could, I could get a vision of, of if I do this today what does that mean uh, 
in two weeks, next month, next year. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. what, what do you get out of that sort of ecstatic um, scenario? Um, I've got the ecstatic scenario. That's probably where um, that whole feminine energy stuff starts to come in. Um, yeah. Definitely, definitely. I guess it's probably not my forte in the headspace I'm in right now, um, being in a very masculine space. But yeah, that's that's where I need stuff like that to to really keep me balanced. I need to just um, the 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 go go, the the mission, the sticking to structures and tick this box and do this and discipline. Um, if you're not careful, they'll just turn you into stone. So mm. ecstatic dancing, you can't have too much structure to that. That's not the point. You you need to move freely. You need to just just move and be wild and, and have no judgment placed to it. Like that's where you need to let that out. Um, and that's, so that's what I do to, to, yeah, help that, just to let that flow. Um, at first, if like, today's probably a good example. If I went to do ecstatic dance, I might actually, once we're done here, I reckon I'll put the lights off and have a bit of a dance. But um. I, I haven't done it in, in a while. And so I'll probably be really rigid and really not really wanting to do it too much. But I think that's why it's important. I'll start doing it. I'll feel awkward and slowly I'll loosen up. I'll get free. And by the end of it, I'll be doing backflips. Not literally, but like it's, it, it just frees me up, up and helps, helps that life force flow. It helps the, I get a little bit, uh, a little, I get a little bit wooey with this stuff sometimes, but that's when it'll, I'll just let the universe go through me and I'll, I'll step out of the way and let it do its thing. No, I say I think Ido Portal as well. He's got his um, body wave, and like like you say, you start off, you know, you're going through a very structured, rigid motion of of like going forehead, nose, chin, chest, pelvis, knees, ankles, if you can, to the wall, and then you just start mm-hmm. to get it flow and move, and then all of a sudden you just find your whole self loosen up, and then oh, what what do we got here? And you said about poetry, like that's that's a real creative pursuit. Do you let that creativity mm. flow into, you know, like being a manager, you, you've got sort of things to do and structures to put in place. Do you, do you try bringing mm. creativity into that, into that life? What a question. Yeah. That's, um, that's actually something that came up in a bit of a um, leadership uh, workshop we were doing as a management group. Um, we're, uh, we're just picking apart lots of, lots of things about us and lots of issues as you do as management groups. And um one thing that came out for me was trying to actually balance that more, um, that, that more poetic side of me to, to my work life. Um, I guess I've always had a bit of a separation. And so that's something I really, I have been working on the last few months. How can you, um, how can I describe it? Like you can, you, you see a painting and you can see the colors on it and the shapes and the lines and everything. And you know that this is a painting. This is something that's beautiful, but how can you see that beauty in something that is a little bit more rigid where it's not right in your face, like, like creating systems and, 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 and different things within the operations and structures. Like that's not, um, that didn't just start in a manual of how to do this. Like you need to be creative. Every business is very different. Every situation is very different and you need to get creative to figure these things out. And so uh, I am finding the more I'm letting that creative out, uh, Float, float through me there like that's that's really helping me as well um yeah it just comes down to balancing cool and i think i think from outside looking in like i've, I've been the only time i've been to melbourne was for a um a induction meeting with when i was working for spec savers um but you see fifth element wellness on on social media and you know from the outside looking in you go well, this is this is a gym you know this is a, a place <laughs> where people go to be fit you know you're talking about masculine energies or or structured environments but what is it about this place that's extra special when and you know we've had a, a small small taste of it with the likes of um adam kavner and, and mark Clore. what what would you say being as part of the mm-hmm. men thing that fifth element we honest is not just this bricks and mortar structure where people go to to uh work out but actually become well and and the clues clues in their name i guess <laughs> Well, that's what it is, man. It's it's um it it does look like a gym, but it's it's holistic health. It's much more than that. Like, um, I think what really what really makes us stand out is that we understand that there's no silver bullet that's really gonna take care of all your issues. Like everyone wishes there is. Um, there's there's usually so many things. Whether it is doing exercise, looking after your nutrition, 
your digestion and your gut health, whether it's it's your hormone levels or whether it is simply you've just got a really crappy lifestyle that's stressing you out too much. Um, so uh, are you meditating enough? Are you looking after yourself in that sense? Are you doing what actually sets your heart on fire? Uh, we look into a lot of a lot of the heart math and, and gratitude stuff. Um, like community. Uh, earlier this year, we did a fifth element wellness retreat with with Guy Lawrence, who I think you've had on the mm, podcast as yeah. well. And um, I mean, ultimately, like one of the big things about that is just the impact of community and how much how beneficial community can be to to your health and to to everything around you. So, yeah, I guess I guess that's what fifth element's about. Like we just we 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 understand that it takes a lot of things. There's no monotherapy and we're not scared to open these boxes and figure out what's legit and what actually works, what's going to work for different people at different times of their lives. Like it's just, there's, there's a lot going on, but we're very open to that. Uh, it's, um, it looks super cool from the outside looking in and, and my mate, uh, Luke Taylor, who has his own little um, boutique facility in, in Hamilton and we've had him on twice. Um, he said, I'm going to, going to Melbourne, you know, what sort of gym should I go to? I'm going to go to the like Olympic Centre and stuff. I said, if you're in Melbourne, you need to go to this gym because it's something special and I think it's it's what you align with. And um, one of the things he talked about, which is what you're working on, is, you know, comes one of the things that can really kickstart your health, it's, it starts at the gut and, and, and what your gut protocol is, what you're feeding your organisms, which uh, outnumber the cells that we've got, you know. Tell us about tell us about what got you down that road and, and how it's going and, and where you're at with that. With my gut health, yeah. Well, um, look, I'll, I'll I'll explain my story the best I can. One thing about um someone like me working at Fifth Element Wellness is that I'm I'm surrounded by some of the best health coaches in the planet, which means I don't necessarily have to um, memorize all the intricate stuff myself. They could just help me out with it. Nice. All the, all the sciencey stuff, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's it's pretty handy. Um, like, like, likewise, so, when I did mine, you know, that was through an integrative practitioner who's a who's a GP. I think 10, 20 years. He's you know worked at obstetrics. He's done Chinese medicine, and then he's brought it all together with a bit of kinesiology thrown in the mix. So, yeah, what I did yeah, awesome. to, to get my gut back back working and energy levels back up were definitely wasn't from uh, downloading something off the internet. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, that's it. <laughs> And I mean, one thing I'm learning here is that just if that's all you're doing, that's awesome. It's good to know, but it's probably more complicated than what you're thinking. And there's probably a lot of stuff that um, even smart people on the internet aren't, aren't putting together. Um, yeah. And that's, that, that's the message I've, I've really got while I've picked up there, like from looking at blood work and looking at stool samples and really doing these tests and just seeing different correlations. Like it's some complicated shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally, literally, yeah. <laughs> um, we've yeah, talked about so, so we've I, talked about stool samples yeah. a few times on this podcast. Um, I think Art Green and, and Luke and, and uh, then of course Ben Moran. I think he takes the most shit in New Zealand at the moment down, <laughs> down, down to their uh, their clinic. So yeah, stool samples is nothing new on this podcast. <laughs> no, that's good, man. It's good. People are sorting their shit out. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so let me talk about um, my, my gut protocol at the moment. So I, um, I, I, a lot of my health issues just stem from my gut not being right. Lots of, lots of stress factors as well, just from my gut being not right. And ultimately, it's coming down from um, living a very stressful lifestyle, eating crap all the time, not sleeping nowhere near enough, partying constantly, working a high-stress job. All of this stuff just added up and years and years of that um, has essentially put holes in my gut, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, and and I, think, I think a lot of people probably have this and don't realise they have it. Um, but the interesting part is that, that it's not like, it's nothing I ever would have thought about. Like, oh, I'm going to go to the doctor because my gut's feeling off. It's um, like for me, it, it manifests itself in ways that you might not really realize like you might have certain skin infections certain um allergies you're having mental fog and clarity things like that they can be traced back to issues that you might be having with your digestion and with your gut um so for me the biggest one really i suppose has been energy and more than anything mental clarity and, and just my ability to think properly um so i've i was put on mid-august or so i was put on a leaky gut protocol 
Um, as well as when we checked some of the bacteria and fungus, all of that stuff that I have, I was pretty low on a lot of essential um, bacteria is the good stuff. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess you've talked about gut health a bit, but like you do need a good balance of good to bad bacteria, just, just in case anyone didn't know that. Um, so I had crappy good bacteria and I had something very, very similar to candida, um, mm. which is, which is a fungal yeast infection. Um, so the candida is probably it's it's loves eating sugars and things like that um which is probably why i've always had really big cravings for sugars like i mean I, there's they not not on just one occasion but there's multiple occasions where i sat there and ate a whole tub of nutella scooped it with tim tams in one sitting wow like, i was a fiend mate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good that, that, wow. that might have yeah yeah i was great at the time but yeah no. <laughs> thinking about that now God, yeah um, so, so that's what's been happening. So I guess, um, uh, mid August has started, um, obviously no sugars or carbohydrates for me. I've been eating pretty, pretty, um, keto, very high fat, um, tons and tons of supplements, no alcohol, no coffee, um, which sucks when you live in Melbourne, but that's, um, pretty crucial. Um, yeah. And then just the, the, I guess what I call it, the basics, like things like my meditating, my Wim Hof breathing, cold showers, just. The, the usual stuff so that's been going for nearly four months now yeah well um i'm feeling great like i do feel really good it's tough like it's it's tough because it feels like you need to sacrifice a lot like if you're cutting out coffee and sugar and and, and alcohol i tell people that and they freak out like they most people don't like to do that for one weekend um so it's it's a bit of a sacrifice when you set out to it but then after a while i got to the point where it's just I just, I, I don't think it is a sacrifice because now the energy that I do have, even though I'm still not through this protocol, I've got some consistent energy. I'm not craving that stuff anymore. That's gone away. Mm. And just how good my brains work and how focused I feel and the clarity I've gotten. I'm remembering things better. I'm recalling things better. I'm engaged in conversations. I can focus more. Like this is stuff that I just struggled with before and I didn't necessarily realize that I struggled with it. So the reality is, even though I had to sacrifice on those things, I've actually been sacrificing on how good this feels for 28 years now. <laughs> and I just, I don't think it's a sacrifice now that I look at it that way. Absolutely. And something that you said about the is like cravings and how it, it clouds your judgment and, and blocks your, your thoughts because, hey, I really want this thing. And I think that, Something of you know they they sort of say that hey your 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 gut's driving you and and maybe the candida is actually you know adding to those cravings and driving you and telling you and setting off um you know transmitters that make you want to orientate your life to getting some sugar so that they can survive um mm. and it makes you think that you're pretty much dying and now that you've lowered that drive and you've got bacteria that are better able to to feed off you know fiber better able to feed off fats then and, and that energy lasts a whole bunch longer then now you can focus on being steven and not being candida in your gut <laughs> that's such a good way of putting it that's exactly right yeah and that's a hard thing to realize i think it's kind of like when i was talking about stepping into the cold shower before like you're, even though I know the cold shower is going to be good for me, I'm still not wanting to do it. And when I'm in that mindset, mindset, I don't like physiologically, I'm very different. My neurotransmitters are behaving very differently. Uh, but I still think that I'm that person and that's what my deep desire is. And I think, um, and then obviously I step in the cold shower, my neurotransmitter profile changes up. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty happy I did that. And I feel much more myself. These are similar things, um, but they're just a lot. Uh, they're a little bit longer term than a than a five minute cold shower. But it's the same concept. If you got if you got that candida that's driving you to think a certain way, you don't realize it's candida. You think it's you until you've gotten rid of the candida. Yeah, and I think it, you know we bring up Joe Rogan a bit here, but <clears throat> I think one of the things that he really um, sort of conceptualizes really well is that, like humans, are you know organisms on this planet us ourselves as a human are also a planet for the organisms that live on us and live in our guts mm. and you know we influence this planet you know there's plenty of arguments right now about climate change and all that sort of carry on but the same thing for the ecology and climate of our guts it's if, if we're 
you know, if they're wanting certain fuels, then they're going to sort of influence the way that we think so that they can survive as well. And, and just like we manipulate, mm. manipulate the planet, use its resources, um, you know, use the animals, orientate the animals to how we want or, or, or plants to how we want. You know, these these things are doing it doing it the same. You can't outrun nature. That's that's. I mean, everything for me goes back to nature. Yeah, absolutely right. Like, nature's going to find a way, one way or another. It always has. And where we, I think, I think another thing that we do as humans is that we sort of uh, put ourselves outside of nature and think we're something else to it. But it's exactly the same. Like you, you. Um, I, I heard I heard Paul Check talking about um, something recently when I was looking about some of his things on on funguses, um, mm. or fungi. Forgive my English. Um, or or as Paul Stamets reckons it's fungi, so who knows? Fungi. Oh, so I've still got it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, anyway, fungi. So, um, and I mean, he said it a lot more elo- eloquently than I'm about to say it, but essentially, he was saying things like bacteria and fun- fungi, like. A fungus's role in nature is to decompose dead things. Like a fungus is one of the only things that can go up to a rock and and decompose that and 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 I guess recycle its material so that the world can use it in a better way. And he said, if you do have fungal infections or back to certain bacteria and things like that, it's um you've you've got those because of you're doing certain things that aren't in line with what you need to be doing for your best interest for, which is also the best interest of that of the planet. Like if you're at your best capabilities, that's the best way you can actually contribute to this earth. Now, if you've got, if you've got a fungus because of your lifestyle, that's actually being detrimental to the way that nature wants humans to function, then that fungus is basically here telling you, Hey, you're not doing your job and we're going to find a better use for you which is kind of dark and gloomy, but it's also like, well, geez, that makes sense to me anyway. That's awesome, man. Like Dr. Uh, Dr. Greg Emerson said that fungus and us are pretty similar. And so if you've got them, they're hard to get rid of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Heard that one. <laughs> Mate, you must have been reading my mind because I was just thinking you said nature and then I was thinking, oh, that's my, you're, you're big on, on fungi, fungi, fungus, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and, and mushrooms and we've had Mason Taylor come on and, and you know he, he went through a lot of what's in their products in Super Feast and about how the mycelium is the, basically the neural network of, of nature and basically like, mm. a, like our neurons but for nature um, mate what is, what is your sort of interest in, in all of that and, and you know you're out there in the forest especially after, after the rain and, and he and looking at what's popped up what what it, you know it's mm. an amazing topic and, and i mentioned paul stamets name there if anybody wants to go down that path um mm. what, what's your perspective champ man just check out paul stamets that's, that's my <laughs> perspective i guess i think the whole mushroom thing like once i started getting into it it just blew my mind in terms of of how just nature works and how humans and animals and plants and fungus interact for each with each other and I think things like fungus are just way smarter than we give them credit for. <laughs> that's that's my take on it. I wish I was. Um, I wish this was the one area I could really nerd out on. But um, uh, they they just interest me. I mean, like I've, I, I once I once I got over the uni thing and everything, I started spending a lot of time in nature just because I, I just I I think we're desensitized to um, the the importance of the connection with it. Like a lot of us live in cities, we're behind computers the whole time, and and there's just something that's ultimately true in nature and I don't necessarily know how to put that in words, but I know every time I do go out there, whether it is to check out the fungus in the middle of winter or to, uh, uh, to just to go to the ocean and have a swim, I always leave just feeling a little bit better, a little bit more reconnected. It's like, I'm just staring at, staring out at a tree for a few minutes let's it reminds me that there's certain laws out there that are fundamental to nature that as humans as the monkeys we are we might not be able to comprehend or understand just yet but they're still laws nevertheless the the sun's been rising and setting well before we were here and it's going to last well after we're gone and we we come from that same soil that same dirt we we evolved from it too so those laws that are out there in nature that we don't understand are also true in us and i think spending time in nature just i find it helps me synchronize myself to that a little bit more 
Mm. That's and all. That's all there is to it, really. Absolutely, and fundamentally, we uh, end up as that dirt um, when it all, when it all, you know, comes comes to the that's end. It, man. Yeah. Back to the mud. <laughs> uh, I've, I've got a, you know, I've got plenty of favourite songs by um, Tom Scott, who's a, who's a Kiwi rapper, um, and one of his songs he talks about this bird that's in the backyard lying on its back and it was singing and now it's returned to the earth and then the earth mm. where the worms are and the worms are what the bird in the backyard used to eat and it's just like oh man that's it's really buzzy <laughs> it's funny yeah it's kind of like kind of like the lion king through the circle of life I remember watching that when i was five yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. it's um it's, it's an area that alex and i have a real connection is um, knowing that whole soundtrack off by heart and singing it and to, to our families, which was bizarrely, yeah. I was I was obsessed with it as a four or five year old, and then I never watched it again until I until I went to university. So I don't know, didn't know. That's what I said. The Lion King. Oh. <laughs> so, hey, yeah. they're remaking it now too. So oh, apparently, better be, be good. Oh man, how can it not be? <laughs> Mate, nunchucks, and now you've got. Glow in the dark, glow in the dark ones. Yes, I got some glow. Some um, oh, they're not glow in the dark. They're LED ones, so they make all these fancy colours. <laughs> yeah, nunchucks. How do you um, start up with nunchucks, mate? So nunchucks, I, I, I remember seeing that. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it. I saw a video on YouTube that's supposedly Bruce Lee um playing table tennis against some professionals with nunchucks and smashing the shit out of them, and I thought nunchucks are cool as hell <laughs> um, and some of my favorite movies are martial art movies kung fu movies and things like that so um when i was when i was uh rediscovering myself or discovering myself and figuring out what i'm into i was like nunchucks why hang on why can't i learn those why can't i figure out they look hard but let's give it a crack so i got some off ebay and um the rest is history i never got rid of them i've just been slinging them ever since and how much have you hit yourself in the face <laughs> <laughs> uh, not as much as I've hit myself in the balls, mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, nah, lucky, lucky these ones are foam. The, yeah. the new ones are a bit harder plastic, so I've, I've, I've gotten a bit of skill. I'm doing it less and less, that's for sure. But yeah, it's fun as, dude. Like, I mean, you just blow, you just play, you just... And it's, I'm sure you know, but it's pretty good for your brain just picking mm. up new skills. So um, a lot of dudes juggle these days. I was like, I juggle a little bit as well, but I mean, I'm just going to learn nunchucks. You make you're reading my mind. I was, I was about to say it's the same as juggling. You know, you you same thing. You're left and right. You are going everywhere. Yeah. You're getting across that course mm. close, and it's bloody, it's brilliant. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, yeah, I think I think that's just another thing that people just um don't realize that like you can't. I, I think people don't understand, including myself until recently, that like skills are something that you can pick up you don't have to just be good at something and not be good at other things you can you can learn how to do it learn the steps like youtube the internet there's so many ways to do it these days and once you start to pick up one thing and actually stick to it long term don't just stick to it for a week and get bored and see yourself progress i think even the skill of learning skills becomes a bit of a skill mate absolutely beginner mindset is a terrible place to be but at the same time um, the learning curve is really fast, so it's quite rewarding. I'm, um, I guess those people that, that have listened to this know that I started CrossFit when we moved over here, and um, I used to be all right at at, um, at chin ups. But of course, in CrossFit, you got to try to do muscle ups, and then of course you got to try to do those muscle ups on on rings. And uh, how I felt like it absolute, I don't know, drop kick useless. And uh, <laughs> yeah, on on Friday we. I was um, graduated to jumping from the box and getting into a ring muscle, ring muscle up from there. So even so slowly, things things are coming along. And, and another thing, like, like we started off with, the more you put into it, the more you go right. This is this is my long term goal. But, you know, I might not feel like getting up this morning, but but I've, I don't know what I did, but I flicked the switch and managed to go five days for the last three weeks. Um, and yeah, you. The more you put in, the more you start to get awesome feedback. So how did you mm. sort of get past that beginner stage of, of nunchucks to that, uh, I think it's called um, conscious competence, where things start to... Oh, yeah. yeah. How, 
how did you how did you make that flip from being a total beginner to starting to understand what you were doing and getting some positivity in, in what you were doing and flow like you said um first thing i bought a cup so i stopped sucking myself in the nuts yeah <laughs> <laughs> no <Nah>, i <laughs> i think it's hard to say man like it's just something that uh, i picked them up back in this phase where i took a few months off and didn't have much else to do mm. um and so i just thought uh, it just looks really cool and i just want to do it i guess at the time i was also driven a bit more by more so than i am now by um how i'm perceived and and making sure that all right if i'm I was sort of like, if I'm going to take this crazy path that nobody else is taking, um, I need to at least make it look cool. <laughs> not just on my way of doing that. But yeah. it, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. I don't really think that way anymore. I think that that um, competition kind of did drive me a little bit, to be honest. But really, really what it is, like once you, I mean, there's a, you, you nunchucks aren't really that hard to get some of the basics and when you do get them you can make them look pretty cool pretty quickly and that's a really good feeling and then you learn another trick which it's just it's just a matter of like i will sit there for a, every day for an hour for a week doing this one movement and by the end of the week i'll know how to do it now and when you do finally have it and it just doesn't feel like work anymore that's a good place to be it's worth every second of pain to get there awesome and um so Adam Kavner, who's known as the Turtle Man, when I said that I was mm. uh, going to get you on for the uh, for the final podcast of the year, he said, "Oh, Steve the Ninja." So you're. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that guy too. Yeah, he's he's, he's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, I think he's I think he's spreading that. Even though he's just Ninja Steve, or, yeah. <laughs> I'm down with that. Like <laughs> that sounds awesome. No, no, cool, mate. Um, someone that we haven't talked about is. Someone who gets a bad rap, and I was, I was reading an article from New Zealand the other day um, around Jordan Peterson. Someone went carnival for one week, and su no surprises, but he hated them, their life. But um, mm. and, and also came at, came at the perspective of the article that that Jordan Peterson's a horrible person. And but what what does he mean to you, man? I, I like I like what he says. <laughs> Jordan Jordan Peterson. Yeah, I. I mean, I started listening to him just on, on YouTube videos and just little little snippets. And I was like, I don't know if I really know what the hell this dude's talking about, but it sounds really interesting. And um, I like what he's got to say. I mean, the whole carnivore diet thing, I don't really know enough about it to comment, to be honest. Um, but I just, I, 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 here's Jordan Peterson to me. I couldn't tell you what I've learned from him, but every time I listen to him, I feel like I've learned a lot. Yeah. I think, <laughs> I think, yeah. I think what That's he does. A really stupid way of putting it, isn't it? <laughs> I, I think. I think what he does really well is um, he. We you know he's a psychologist. So it's, that's what his job is. Is he makes you realise that, um, like you say, you, you've you've already got the skills. You, you've you know when you're bullshitting yourself. So if you want the results, stop bullshitting yourself, and then you might get the yeah. results. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. And yeah, yeah, he does. He does take the hard line. Like it's um, it's it's not it's not about you're perfect the way you are. It is about like no. Well, you could do and you you could improve a little bit more. You could actually do these things to, um, to be the person that you can and probably should be. So, do it. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's as simple as make your bed in, in first thing in the morning, and you know get get one thing that's quite easy to do done and hey you you're already a success for the day. That's it. You're on the yeah. right road. Yeah. And with the carnival that's, thing that's... with the carnival thing, I think they just like to throw that at him because um the, the media narrative is that everybody should be vegan. So, you know, it's another way to put pin on pin on him that you know he's an evil person. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. <laughs> Whereas it's probably mutually exclusive. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm with you there, mate. It's man, it's a Sunday night, so I'll I'll let you get off because you work in a gym and that starts at really like ridiculous hours, and I've I've got to get up early myself, um, as well as <laughs> as well as the possibility of being woken up in the middle of the night. But um, where do people find you, and where do people find for Element Wellness? Because I think that's also really important for people to to have a good look at, yeah. especially if you're in Melbourne. <laughs> 
yeah, do definitely come come um, come hang out with us for a little bit. See what it's about. It's, um, it's a cool place. Um, if you like, if you want to um, check out Fifth Element, I guess uh, Instagram and Facebook are the best way. Um, just Fifth Element Wellness or Five Element Wellness on Instagram. Um, and on our website, on all of that stuff, the usual stuff, you'll find tons of information there. But um, definitely do check it out. Uh, if yeah, if you want to, if you want to just catch up with all the bullshit I'm up to, um, I'm on Facebook as well, Stephen Golovsky, or Instagram's probably better. It's um, Stivka underscore uh, 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 is my Instagram handle. So yeah, hit us up if it's um, if you do have any health questions or anything, and you do want to figure out like some of this gut stuff and everything. Um, the guys at Fifth Element Wellness. They know their shit. <laughs> they know their shit. <laughs> That's all I can say. Mate, um, Fair, man. I think people should check you out on Instagram because your videos, especially of late, have been bloody fantastic. So um, there's a lot there to be gained by visiting your page, and I'll, I'll be sure to have all of those in the show notes, like always. And, and people should check them out and, and head along to the links. Um, what would you like to leave people with, Steve? Um, what you're thinking, what you're living your life by, quotes or questions even. What would, what would, you, what would you present to the world, mate? <laughs> if I had to pick one thing, I just really hope that, I just really hope that people realise that, that we're alive right now. Now's the time and you can do whatever you want. And realistically, you probably can do way more than what you're doing now. And if you think that's you, you should because you can. Well, look at that. That's, Short that's and sweet it, as well. That's that's, that's effective. That's it. Just mate, get it done. Get out there and make it happen. Absolutely, mate. This has been awesome. And when I asked you on, you were like, "What do you mean?" And I said, "Well, you you know about this, this, and this." And you're like, "Oh, I suppose you know that that makes sense." Then, and we've talked for an hour, so it's been wicked. And, you know, uh, man, you've um you've you've taken my podcast cherry from me. <laughs> <laughs> it's been been awesome. Been good to break down with you. Absolutely, mate. And um, have an awesome festive season, whatever you end up doing, even if it is uh, a kombucha, although that might have too much sugar, I'm not sure. Make sure it's a homebrew. Yeah, kombucha on my protocol. Oh, yeah, that's... Oh, that's, an, yeah. that's an interesting one to talk yeah. about. I, didn't, I, I don't know the specifics just before we, we wrap it up, but like I know kombucha and things like that are a pretty trendy thing. Um, but this... For me, on my protocol, once we did the testing, it turns out that that's actually one of the worst things I could have been doing. Yeah. Um, so I guess the I guess the ultimate lesson out of that for me is you can't just guess these things. Like you really got to do the testing. You got to do the proper legit testing and really find out what's going on. Um, don't don't be trendy with it. Yeah. No, you're you're right. Because what is it? A symbiotic, uh, scoby culture of yeah. bacteria and yeast. And, so- and yeast. That is the word. You don't want one of those when you're trying to clean up your gut. No, that's it. This was not medical advice. That's it, mate. Just saying. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. I'm, 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 if you haven't noticed this part of the podcast, I'm a bit of a dummy, so don't, listen, don't take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, mate. Have an awesome Sunday night. Cheers. I appreciate it, man. You too.